Well, looks like the, the storm has passed for a while. I hear it's coming in though. And a couple more hours at 10 o'clock, the wind's supposed to pick up. I don't know if it's gonna snow anymore. Um, but I hear there's another storm coming in past that. So let's see how deep it is. Yeah, not too deep. Oh, beautiful sunny day, you know? And look at that. See, that's a regular contrail that that jet's leaving. I think. Yeah. Is it a persistent contrail? Maybe. Uh, it's, it's evaporating after it. Uh, well, looks like the little boy's up. He's crawled out of his house. Sunning himself off. I guess that's where it pays to be a black cow out here. He could soak up some of that morning sun a little easier, warm him warm his bones up. So his buddy is in the process of uh, being butchered. Now I got him hanging. And that's the, the tough life out here on the farm. But he kept escaping and causing problems. Wound up in that feedlot again. All their cows were calling to him over there, and I think is what happened. They rounded their cows up. He went out looking for them, and then they saw him out there in the in the pasture. And I told him, I says, if you see him, let me know. Well, they went ahead and rounded them up, put them in their feed pot feed lot. And then didn't let me know that the cow was out there, or that the cow was even in their feed lot. So I went out looking around for him and uh, rode my bike into their feedlot, and lo and behold, there he was. And I told the, the girl there, I said, hey, my, my cow's in your number 22 pen. And then so she instantly says, well, you're trespassing, or and you're trespassing, or something. I said, well, are you trying to steal my cow? Oh, why would I want that? She was screaming, like, totally guilty. And the old man, uh, the father, he... Uh, I say old man, he's, he's probably about my age. He uh, then, you know, says, oh, well, I understand we have your cow in our feedlot over here. When are you going to come get him? So we went and got him, you know, as the storm was just starting to hit. But I don't know what they, they did to him over there. He was just super violent and, you know, just major agitated and crazy. Tried to take me out a couple times while I was trying to get him loaded up in the trailer. So when I brought him back here, um, I just, you know, I was like, yeah, done with him. And then he's, he's prime. And we were going to mate him with uh, the neighbor's uh, cows. But somebody told him it's best not to mate with the cows until mm, April, I think, April, May. So I'm like, yeah, I don't want to wait that long. So went ahead and... Um, shot him in the head and uh, then we gutted him, hung him up and uh, bleeding him, then gutted him and now I got the long arduous process of uh, butchering him and you know it's just perfect actually the storm so it gives it was getting like 50 degree days so now I can get, you know, maybe a week or more um, hang on them uh, to cure the meat. Uh, the meat's, uh, it makes it more tender if you can, uh, like, age cure them for a while. So that's what we're going to do. Do a little age curing of the meat. So I've got to... Go sweep off some snow off some hay, clean out his 
his trough there, get the snow off of it, give him some fresh hay. Pause it for a minute while I do that. So, you see all these weird prints and scratch marks right there. See those like long claw looking scratch marks? And look at all this around here. So some animals been in eating the guts and they busted the gut sack open. I didn't get a chance to bury it. Um, and the snow started coming in. So, have to, uh, well, I just let them do their, they're eating it, and going to town, let them do their thing. I don't know why my gimbal here is trying to do something strange. But yeah, it's like they've been eating it. And uh, this morning, I seen the the birds, the mockingbirds, were over here pecking on this. So they're cleaning the meat off this. And what this is, if we turn it over, see if you recognize it. Yeah, those are ears. That's his, the cow's face. Kind of gruesome, I know. But he was so violent in the back of the, I don't know why my Kimball's like shaking back and forth. Kind of crazy. Um, anyways, he knocked off one of his little horn buds coming out trying to bang in the back of the trailer. There's the eye socket. Uh, yeah. Oh, and, and yesterday, um, I come out here, the neighbor's dog was over here. So I took the dog back home. It had the leash, like it broke off its leash, came over, was getting into that. And then when I walked it back, back home, there was uh, bear tracks just walking down the street, but I didn't see the bear tracks over here. So um, for some reason, it probably, smelled it but didn't know where it was but the bloodhound dog from next door uh, found it so more gruesomeness main thing when with the animal is that right away you get the guts out of it so you don't want the guts um, ruining the meat so everything's got to be cleaned out of the cavity and then see I stretch the cavity open to get as much air as possible in there so you don't get mold growing inside if you do get mold growing inside of it <clears throat> it's not a big problem I shouldn't because I'm you know, only plan on maybe getting a five day hang out of it. If I get 10 days, it'd be great. Um, but, uh, next I'm gonna have to start, uh, cutting the, the hide off of them. And that's going to be the next project. Very time consuming, but I get it done. Well, I spoke too soon. It sounds like the, uh, the wind's already picking up, coming back in. You hear that blowing through the trees up there? They're starting to move. Why is that little buddy? Huh? I didn't even get a chance to clean it yet. 
Yeah. You got grass all over your face. Yeah, you got grass all over you. What you got down there? It's kind of like a a hay ice cream cone. I don't know if you can see over there, mountains are dusted pretty good with snow. And those mountains over there don't usually get as much snow. The mountains behind me get a lot more than, than those will. So, <clears throat> I figured I would, uh, seeing that there's a, a bear around, I had to get some of my, my bear deterrent there. Actually, I had to use that to put down the cow. It's a 45 caliber bullet, but it's bigger. It's called 454 Kazol. So, it's got more powder than your Colt 45 but yet he uses uh, the same Colt 45 bullet or the slug but more powder behind it. It's kind of like a 45 Magnum. Not as much power as the 500 Smith & Wesson but it's uh, it's got a lot of a lot of oomph behind it. He's, uh, he's mining for his food in his trough there. Let's see, go out here and see if I can see those bear tracks again. <clears throat> when I saw them yesterday, too, they were um, after the snow plow came through. So yeah, they were pretty fresh. It was, it was probably sometime in the middle of the day that the bear come walking down the road. <clears throat> and it just walked right in front of my place, down over in front of the neighbor's house. Saw one vehicle drive through already today, and the road's starting to melt off pretty quick. Oh, here comes the car right now. No, no bear tracks. So, for those that want to know, what's the temperature? It's around 30 degrees, I think, when I checked this morning when I went out. So, not too cold. Uh, just slightly over freezing. But the cow's water trough um, had about maybe an inch worth of ice on top. Not too thick. And I'll just see in a minute. I don't, well, I don't think you can see it from this video, but that's what I'm, I go on the pin and I start... Um, breaking up his ice in his trough so he can get a drink. I mean, he can eat the snow, but still at that. Um, I had just unplugged the heater off um, his trough that's out in the, the big field. I uh, just figured didn't need it anymore because it wasn't getting that cold until <laughs> we had this storm come along. You know, I thought spring was already here. Actually, there was grass starting to grow out in the, the pastures. So... It's kind of a freak snowstorm and they were totally uh, engineering this this weather system they've been up for days spraying chemtrails up in the sky and then it, you can see also um, I took some pictures of it where they're using the radar and the lidar uh, to push the the clouds to get them to go where they want oddly enough there used to be a guy on here his name was uh, Mike Morales on YouTube and he would, um, you know, explain, uh, it was called, uh, oh, above ground weather. Don't know. Don't, don't ever see any of his videos anymore. And, uh, I don't know what happened to him. I think 
he was saying that his wife got cancer, um, and then he had something going on with, with him too, so don't know if they just like shut him up about it, or, you know, and killing him or what, but yeah, it's kind of mysterious, but he exposed a lot of the stuff, and, you know, even like showed where um, they were uh, using dew weapons and stuff like that, and how, how they're manipulating the weather all around the world, so it's not just here in America. So for those of you that think, oh God, he left the gate open, the cow's going to get out, eh, I'm just testing him. I mean, where's he going to go? <laughs> he He's not like the other one. If it was the other one, yeah, he'd, he'd probably take off too. Um, but this guy, he, he, I mean, I can leave that gate open. He'll stay in his pen. He's not going to go anywhere. He might go up and hang out at the front door and that's about it. Waiting to get back in his pen. But yeah, he's a pretty good boy. He's not a shithead like the other one. But of course we know what happened to him. This guy... I don't know. It's it's tough, you know. You you start making friends with, you get attached to them, and you got to butcher them. It's the hard life of being a farmer. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck. I think I like this little life. This little life. I think I like this little life. This silly. And I'm glad to be here sharing this little simple life with you. Take care.